Hey everyone, welcome back to the networking series. Today, we're taking a deep dive into one of the most important topics in networking, subnetting. If you've heard of subnetting before and found it confusing, don't worry. By the end of this video, you'll understand what subnetting is, how to calculate subnets, and why it's essential for efficient network management. Let's get started. First, what exactly is subnetting? Subnetting is the process of dividing a larger network into smaller, more manageable pieces called subnets. Each subnet functions as its own mini network within the larger network. This helps improve performance, security, and management. Imagine your network as a big city. Without any organization, it would be chaotic and difficult to navigate. Subnetting is like dividing the city into neighborhoods with each neighborhood having its own unique address, making it easier to find your way around. The same idea applies to networks, where subnets help reduce congestion and isolate different parts of the network for better control. But why do you need subnetting? Well, for one, network congestion can be a real problem. When too many devices are trying to communicate on a single large network, you can end up with a lot of data collisions, which slow things down. Subnetting reduces this congestion by keeping local traffic within smaller subnets, making the overall network more efficient. Another reason is network security. By isolating different parts of the network into subnets, you can apply different security policies to each one. For example, you might have a subnet for your internal devices and another for your guest users. This way, you can enforce stricter security on the internal subnet while allowing limited access on the guest subnet. Finally, subnetting helps with IP address management. When dealing with a large network, it's easy to run out of IP addresses. Subnetting allows you to use your IP address space more efficiently by creating smaller subnets that are sized according to the number of devices you need. To understand subnetting, you need to know about subnet masks. A subnet mask is a 32-bit number that helps the network know which part of an IP address refers to the network and which part refers to the device itself. In binary form, a subnet mask consists of a series of ones followed by a series of zeros. The ones represent the network portion, while the zeros represent the host portion. For example, let's take the IP address 192.168.1.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. The first 24 bits of the subnet mask are ones, indicating that the first 24 bits of the IP address identify the network. The remaining bits are zeros, which represent the host portion or the individual device. When we talk about subnet mask, you'll often hear CIDR notation. CIDR stands for Classless Interdomain Routing and it's a shorthand way of writing the subnet mask. Instead of having to write out 255.255.255.0, we can use a slash followed by the number of bits used for the network. So 192.168.1.0 slash 24 means the first 24 bits are for the network and the remaining bits are for the host. CIDR notation is flexible and allows for more efficient allocation of IP addresses. It lets us create subnets of various sizes based on our needs, rather than having to stick to predefined classes like class A, B, or C. This helps avoid wasting of IP addresses. Now, let's get into the calculation of subnets. There are three main things you need to figure out. The network address, the broadcast address, and the usable range of IP addresses within each subnet. The network address is the first address in a subnet and is used to identify the subnet itself. It's like the name of a neighborhood in a city, helping to distinguish one subnet from another. Now the broadcast address is the last address in the subnet, and it's used to send data to all the devices within that subnet simultaneously. The usable range of IP addresses is the range of addresses you can assign to devices within the subnet. The first address is reserved for the network and the last is reserved for the broadcast. So the usable addresses fall between those two. Let's go through an example together. Suppose you have the network 192.168.1.0 slash 24, which means we're working with a 24 bit subnet mask. If we want to create subnets that each have 30 usable addresses, we'll need to borrow bits from the host portion. In this case, if we borrow three bits, that leaves five bits for the host addresses. Why five? Well, because two to the power of five gives us 32 total addresses per subnet, which includes the network and broadcast addresses, leaving us with 30 usable addresses. 
So each subnet will have 32 addresses, but only 30 of those can be assigned to devices. Starting with 192.168.1.0/27, the first subnet will have a usable range from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.30, with 192.168.1.31 as the broadcast address. The next subnet will start at 192.168.1.32/27, with a usable range from .33 to .62, and with .63 as the broadcast address. You can continue this pattern for additional subnets. Now let's talk about variable length subnet masking or VLSM. VLSM allows you to create subnets of different sizes within the same network. This is useful when different parts of your network have different requirements for IP addresses. For instance, a large office might need a bigger subnet for workstations, while a small subnet might be sufficient for a few servers. With VLSM, you can assign a slash 26 subnet to one segment for 62 usable addresses and a slash 28 subnet for another for only 14 usable addresses. This flexibility helps you make the most of your IP address space. Now, subnetting isn't just about dividing networks into smaller pieces. It's also about organizing the traffic. In large networks, you might want to create subnets for different departments or floors in a building. This way, you can prioritize traffic, isolate issues, and improve performance across the network. Another practical use of subnetting is in home networks. Even if you don't realize it, your home router is already using subnetting to create a local network for all your devices. The router assigns a private IP address to each device, keeping local traffic within your home network and making sure your devices can communicate with each other and access the internet. Subnetting also plays a crucial role in network security. By segmenting your network into multiple subnets, you can apply different security measures to different areas. For example, you might set up a DMZ subnet for public facing services like web servers, while keeping your internal network on a separate, more secure subnet. All right, let's wrap up with a quick recap. Subnetting is the process of dividing a large network into smaller subnets. It helps reduce congestion, improves security, and conserves IP addresses. We use subnet masks and CIDR notation to define the boundaries of each subnet. And we calculate the network address, the broadcast address, and the usable IP ranges to understand how subnets are structured. In the next video, we'll explore network protocols and how they help different devices communicate over the network. We'll dive into protocols like TCP and UDP and look at how they impact data transmission. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you all for watching. I really mean that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Drop a comment down below. Like I said, I really want to know what you guys think about the series so far. Have a great day. Take care.